Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how you can use Amazon EMR to extract data from the Redfin data source and then transform the data, okay, and then load it inside Amazon S3 bucket, okay. Previously, I showed you how you can use Python to extract data from Redfin data source load it in your raw data and then transform it and then load the transform data in your s3 bucket after which we loaded it into snowflake and then connected power bi for visualization okay we orchestrated this process using apache airflow that is installed in amazon ec2 instance okay if you have not watched this video I encourage you to go and watch that okay i will put the link to this video in the description below okay now take note this for this project we did it inside an amazon ec2 instance that was one machine right but remember in that video for those of you that have watched it we you saw that the data was was large although it was in the gigabyte scale okay but in today's video we want to do that same process but then we would like to use amazon emr so we will connect our amazon emr to the redfin data source okay we extract the data put it inside s3 bucket okay then we'll grab that raw data from the s3 bucket process it inside our amazon emr again then the transform data will load it back inside amazon s3 bucket okay now we are going to be using jupyter notebook that is running in amazon emr to do this extraction to write our code to do this extraction and do the transformation okay and then and also inside this amazon emr we are going to be installing or importing apache spark okay and then we will use the PySpark api to write PySpark PySpark code on our jupyter notebook to be able to do the extraction and transformation okay this is going to be interesting guys are you guys ready for this very good guys so now as you know that the use of internet iot devices sensors social media and so on have resulted in vast amount of data being generated every day and for companies to process and derive insight from this data or even train machine learning models a big data technology or framework with distributed computing will need to be used and also we know that this data that is being processed by some of these companies are in the terabyte or the pentabyte scale okay now examples of such distributed computing uh, software frameworks are apache adobe and apache spark okay now however instead of you running these frameworks on your machine you can preferably run them on the Amazon EMR, which comes with pre-installed big data frameworks. Okay, it comes with these frameworks. Okay, now let us understand what exactly is Amazon EMR. Amazon EMR that for sh you can call Amazon Elastic Map Reduce. The EMR is Elastic Map Reduce. But of course you can call it for short amazon emr okay this is a service offered by aws okay it comes with pre-installed big data frameworks such as apache adobe apache spark presto flink tensorflow and so on i'm going to be showing you how you can provision the amazon emr in today's video and also how we can use it to extract and process data okay but then let us take a look at what is what we have right here on this link i'm going to be giving you this link in the description below okay 
it tells us that Amazon EMR is a managed cluster, is a managed cluster platform that, simplifi that simplifies running big data frameworks such as Hadoop and Apache Spark. I just talked about that. To process and analyze vast amount of data. Okay, you want to analyze your data that is in the terabyte scale or pentabyte scale, you can use Amazon EMR, okay? Now, and also this Amazon EMR can easily integrate with your different data stores or databases like the Amazon S3 and the Amazon DynamoDB. We will see the benefits we get if we, using Amazon EMR shortly, okay? Now, one thing I want to then talk about right here, let's take a look at the overview of Amazon EMR. Okay, when we talk about Amazon EMR, take note of one thing. When you are running your code on Amazon EC2, that is one machine right there. Or if you are running on your own personal laptop, that is one machine right there. Okay, but for us to explore Amazon EMR, then in that case, we need to provision clusters of machine. So we call them clusters of nodes. So that means each instance is a node so what are we talking about right here if you look at this it says the central component of amazon emr is cluster okay a cluster is a collection of amazon ec2 instances okay so that means when you provision a cluster of nodes that means that you are provisioning for yourself multiple ec2 instances Okay, so that means you want your code to be, or you want your data to be processed on multiple instances, multiple EC2 instances. So it's going to be a distributed computation that is going to be going on. Okay, you can see it says each instance in the cluster is called a node. Okay, now let me show you the node types that that when you provision you are going to be seen in your eml clusters you have three we have the primary node which we also call the master node you have the core node and you have the task node okay now this is what is happening guys so if you go on amazon emr and you provision let's say you provision a cluster that has six or let's say you have five uh five ec2s Okay, so or five nodes. What happens right there is that one of them is going to be the master node. Okay, shortly I'll tell you what the master node does. Okay, so one of them is going to be the master node, and the remaining four will be the core node. Okay, task I didn't mention task node yet because task node is optional. You can see task nodes are optional. However, if I want, if I still want. So if I, however, if I want to use task node, I could say I have one master node, I have three core nodes, and then I can make one of these. I can say the last one is the task node. Okay. Now the question you ask yourself is, what is the difference between the master node, the core nodes, and the task nodes? Okay. Now let's come back right at the primary node, which again is called the master node. It is the node that manage, manages the clusters, the cluster by running software components to coordinate the distribution of task, the distribution of data and task among other nodes for processing. So basically what we are saying is that the master node or the primary node is what coordinates what is going on in this cluster. Okay, so it is the one that runs the software component that coordinate all these distributions and also that does that, that coordinate distribution of data and also task okay the primary node tracks the status of task and monitors the health of the cluster okay that is what the master node does it distributes data right it distributes tasks it tells the different calls or the different nodes this is your job this is your job this is your job this is your job okay and also it helps to track the status of the task that it has it has you know that it has assigned to each of the nodes okay 
Okay, look at something right here. It says every cluster has a primary node. Take note, every cluster. That means whenever you provision any EMR cluster, it we always have a primary node. And it's possible to create a single node cluster with only the primary node. So that means when you create an EMR cluster, you could decide that you only want a single node cluster. If it's a single node cluster means that it's just going to be having only the master node. Okay. However, because you are dealing with big data right here and you want your processes to be very efficient and quick, right? So in that case, you will want to assign or you want to provision more nodes right there core nodes okay and optionally you could provision task node as well okay now what is core node it says a node with software components that runs task and store data in the adobe distributed file system on your cluster you can see that so like i said this core node is what runs the task take note the core node is what runs the task the master node is what is going to assign the task to each of those other nodes and also helps to distribute data to all the other nodes okay and also these core nodes store data it stores data in the hdfs adobe distributed file system in your cluster okay so look at this it says multi-node clusters have at least one core node what does that mean Remember, I told you right here that you could decide to provision a single node cluster. If you provision a single node cluster, means that your cluster is only going to have the primary node, which is the master node. But then, if you want a multi-node cluster, take for example, you want a two-node cluster. That means one of them will be master node, then the second is going to be a core node. Okay, so that's why it says multi-node clusters have at least one core node you should have at least one core node okay if you are going to be having a multi-node cluster that is two or more nodes in your cluster now what is task node task node is also pretty much like core node it it performs the task but it does not store data in the hdfs you can see it is a node with software component that run only task that only runs task and does not store data can you now say that is the difference between your core node and your task node okay so that means i could decide to provision a seven node cluster uh seven node cluster right here i could say master node that's going to be one and then i could say one two three four core nodes right that means that's a total of five nodes now and then the remaining two is going to be the task node okay uh, because i'm provisioning seven node cluster but then take note that your task node those two task nodes, they are not going to store data so depending on your use case that is what will determine if you want to use a task node or not okay and then we can you can use this to do what to run large or to, to to extract data from different sources, large data source, and also to process this data, this large data for whatever thing you want to do for business intelligence or for uh, training machine learning models, okay? Now, what do we stand to benefit when we run Amazon or when we use Amazon EMR, okay? One thing you need to know is that when you use Amazon EMR as a company, then there is no need for you to purchase and maintain any big data infrastructure on your company site, okay? So that means you don't need to buy these big, you know, servers and all of that, and then you need to start maintaining it and all of that. That's going to be a lot of work and a lot of expenses, right? So it helps you to save, you know, to save some cost, right? there. We talk about cost saving and also amazon emr pricing depends on the instance type that you also want to use okay so depending you're going to see by the time we want to provision it okay and also one thing you need to realize is that this emr uh, amazon emr is on demand okay so companies can save money by spinning up clusters and down without having to set up their own cluster 
you don't have to set up your own Adobe cluster on your on, on your on your premise or on your company site. Okay, you don't have to buy any server where you have to be maintaining it and all of that. So you can just you know create an account uh, on Amazon and then provision your Amazon EMR and then you can spin it up or spin it down depending on what you are trying to do it's that easy okay it helps you to save cost and also you can easily integrate your amazon emr to all that aws services take for example you can integrate it to your amazon s3 you know bucket you can integrate it to your amazon dynamo db or different data stores that you have okay now if you are talking about scalability and flexibility i'll give you the link to this in the description below where you can you know read uh, uh all these things right there okay of course you can easily deploy it in terms of scalability you can see amazon emr provides flexibility to scale up or down as your computing needs change so that means that you could even let's say let's say on monday you always have a very high workload you always have a lot of data to process on tuesday you only have limited number to process that means you could configure your amazon emr to do auto scaling in which case whenever there is a large data set that is to be processed it's going to spin up more clusters for you and then whenever it gets to a time that oh it sees that the data is limited is small and then it scales down you know it scales down the clusters for you the number of clusters you can see right here it says you can resize your cluster to add instances for peak workloads and remove instances to control costs. You can see that now when peak loads subside, when peak workloads subside. So you can easily, you know, work with the scalability and flexibility that AWS provides right there for you. Okay. And of course, in terms of reliability, right, and security, you can be rest assured that because Amazon is the one that, you know, that is running all these configuration, doing all these configurations and all of that for you, it can be, it's going to be reliable, okay? Amazon EMR monitors nodes in your cluster and automatically terminates and replaces an instance in case of failure. You, you can see that all this has been has been put in place by default for you guys okay now all about security about amazon also ensures that your emr is secure take for example you can use the i am role take even just an example is that is in our video today we are also going to be creating an i am role that we are going to give permissions to be able to create emr and do a whole lot of things and also we are going to create amazon vpc also today so all these different features helps to secure our amazon emr we are going to be using the ec2 kps okay you know all this help to secure your clusters okay so i will give you the link to this uh to this page so you can also go through it and also you know you can understand more what the amazon emr provides okay so now the next thing we are going to be doing right now is we are not we are going to be going into provisioning our emr cluster and then we are going to be extracting data and transforming the data okay are you guys ready for that great let's get going guys 